Hello everyone, my name is Denise. This morning I'll be talking about being vigilant with school children. But before I do so, I would like to explain to you some of the different ways that I hear from the Lord. And the reason I'll be doing this is because many times I hear prophets or prophetic people would come and they would say that I've heard from the Lord. And I myself would wonder, how did this person hear from the Lord? Was it through a dream, a vision? How did they hear? And so for this reason, I'll be explaining to you. Also to help anyone who may be interested in the prophetic and how it works. Okay. I hear from the Lord audibly, just as I'm speaking now and you can hear me. This is one of the ways that I hear from the Lord. I also hear through dreams and visions. There are also times when I would have a download of information where I would know everything that happened as if I was there when the event took place. Okay, those are some of the ways that I hear from the Lord. Right, as I've said, I'll be talking about being vigilant with school children. I believe it was in 2019, I couldn't find this in my diary for some reason, but I believe it was in 2019 when, when I had a dream where a bad master was trying to capture a young child, you know, to destroy the child because he believed the child was special or had special giftings. Then on the 25th of March, 21, I was praying when the Lord spoke to me and he said that I should pray for children. I should pray against the assassination or the killing of young children, he said. And since then, I've been thinking about those words that the Lord has spoken to me. And recently, I received a text message from one of my daughter's school, you know, saying that parents should be vigilant um, because there was a man that was following a young child at a local school. And so parents should be vigilant. Then on the 16th of June, 21, the Lord allowed me to hear in the spiritual realm where some people were running a ring where they were planning to kidnap children and sacrifice them. But those that they claim were special or had special gifts were kept alive. Then the Lord allowed me to hear how they were plotting to get some young children even out of the schools, whereby they befriend the parents to make themselves familiar with the child or children to be able to collect them from the school. So this is what they were doing and the Lord allowed me to hear the plot that was going on. What they are also doing is recruiting local people to help them to do this and they have no remorse in what they are doing. And I could hear them saying so that they have no remorse. I could hear it in the spiritual realm. These people are operating in Asia, as I've said, but they are reaching out all over the world. It's the time that we are living in. It's the end time that we are living in. And you know, the scripture tells us that these things would happen in these times and so don't be surprised you know at what you are hearing but be vigilant and continue to pray because the enemy is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and he knows that our children the children are the future you know they are the next generation who are coming up but these people intent for evil and so the Lord has been showing me and so let us continue 
to pray for our young children, to continue to pray and to be vigilant because the enemy is always plotting, you know, always plotting to destroy. Okay, those are my few words, but I also would like to, you know, speak about um, my experience on watching a, a prophet on YouTube. Yesterday, on the evening, just before I went to bed, I went on YouTube and I was looking and I saw a well-known prophet that I used to watch before, but I stopped watching for, you know, years ago now. But there was something that I noticed when I saw his video. I thought, I'll have a look. And so I pressed and began to watch. And I could see where this prophet was subliminally lying to the people. He was trying to lead the people to himself rather than to God. That's what this prophet was trying to do, was subliminally lying to people, you know, telling them that they basically can do it without Jesus. God has given us, you know, authority. And so they are telling people that they can use that authority and that they do not need Jesus in whatever they're doing. They can do it basically, he's saying, without God. You know, the Lord spoke to me straight away because when I woke up this morning, it was still on my mind. I woke up thinking about, you know, those words that I heard, those lies in a disguised ways, you know, way. And so I was thinking about it and the Lord said, you will get more. He said, when we rely on him, Though he has given us authority, he's saying we'll get more out of what we are doing when we rely on him. But this prophet, as I said, you know, was subliminally leading people to himself rather than to God. This is why I love the olden days prophets, because they would tell the people you know, that it, it's about God. They would lead the people to God rather than themselves. But some of these people, not, you know, all prophets, some of these want to make things seem as if they come with their own power. They have their own authority. It's them for the people to look to them rather than God. But the olden days prophets you know, they were always leading the people to God. Many of these prophets, they don't even preach repentance. You never hear them ever preaching repentance. Even when you visited their church, they never correct the people, you know, of sin, convict them of sin or tell them about anything sinful that they're doing that is wrong or lead them to repentance. It's always something else. It's always to do with them, you know, and God said, no man shall take his glory. No man shall take his glory, you know, and so what these people are doing, we have to be careful listening, you know, to many of these prophets. When you see they're pointing to themselves rather than God, they're trying to reinvent themselves, you know, they're trying to reinvent themselves, coming up with something new or blind you with science and all these education, how educated they are to take you away and us from the things of God and to point to themselves. And that's what they're doing. And as I, you know, lay there in bed thinking about this, the Lord spoke to me audibly I keep my notes all the time so I can say exactly what I heard. The Lord spoke to me and he said, those souls, they die. Those souls, they die. These prophets, the Lord is saying, they've died because they are leading the people away from himself to themselves. They are, you know, proclaiming themselves. When we look back at scriptures where 
you know, Paul, the disciples, the people were coming asking if Paul, if John, I should say, if John the Baptist was the Christ, they wanted to know if he was the Christ based on the things that they saw him doing. But he said, no, he wasn't. And he told them that there was one coming who is greater than he is. But these prophets want to say that they are God. They're proclaiming themselves. That's what they're doing, you know, in a disguised way. Trying to lead the people as if they come with their own power. When God anoints us, you know, it's not us. If he takes that, if he removes that away, then we are nothing. And so it just grieves my spirit when I see these prophets, you know, doing that. Even in the scripture, in Luke, Jesus tells the disciples not to rejoice that, you know, demons are subjected to them or spirits are subjected to them. You know, they were excited when they saw that they cast out demons and they did all these miracles and stuff. And they saw how demons were subjected to, to them. They were excited. But Jesus told them, you know, do not do not rejoice about that. But rejoice that your name is written in heaven. That's what the Lord is saying. Rejoice that your name is written in heaven. And so, as I've said, it grieves my spirit to see when some of these prophets go out and they are blatantly leading people away from God. They do not preach repentance at all. And they try to come as if it's in them. It's, they are the ones. You know, you don't need to look to God. But I'm telling you, it doesn't work like that. You are heading for destruction. You know, you're heading for, for something else rather than salvation. And we can see that the Lord spoken to me. And he said, those souls die. The Lord spoke to me immediately. I wasn't even asking or speaking to the Lord about stuff. I was just thinking, you know, the lies. How these people are blatantly coming, you know, and saying that you don't need Jesus. Basically, they can do it by themselves. That's what they're telling the people. But though God has given us authority, we still need him. We still need him. You know, we still point to him and not to ourselves. As I see, you know, some of these prophets are doing. It is wrong and they should repent. The Lord know the hand where they're going to be. Because he said those souls, they die. And so brethren, be careful. Be careful about watching these people. Be careful about copying these people. Be careful about, you know, looking to them as examples because many of them are leading people astray. And the scriptures speak about in the end time, the last days, that these false prophets would rise up. You know, they are false because they're leading people away from God. And telling them that basically they can do it without God and they cannot. Okay, these are my few words for today. But before I go, I would like to say if there's anyone who don't know Jesus as their personal savior. I want to encourage you today to seek the Lord today before it's too late for you. Tomorrow is not promised to any man and we could die in our sins at any time. And so I want to encourage you this day to receive the Lord, repent of your sins and receive the Lord before it's too late. There are also those who were once with Christ, but they've now turned away from the faith. I want to encourage you also to return to the Lord, to seek him today again before it's too late for you. What will it profit you to gain this whole world and to lose your soul? There are also those who are still professing the faith, but they are lukewarm. The Bible described them as being lukewarm, having one foot in and one foot out, still doing the things of the world and the things of God. 
I want to encourage you to repent today and to turn to the Lord before it's too late for you. Let your light shine that men will see and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Okay, thank you for listening. God bless you. Bye-bye.